So there are a number of inflammatory pathways that can occur in asthma. And you know, our understanding years ago was relatively limited and we broke patients down into e either atopic or non-atopic patients. And we really focused on the, the mast cell. Increasingly, we've come to realize that there are additional forms of inflammation, and one of those is mediated by a cell called the eosinophil. And in the subgroup of patients who have that form of inflammation, the eosinophil really plays a critical role. We had a session, and we were talking about a, a newer treatment that binds interleukin-5, a, a cytokine that stimulates eosinophils. And before we talked about the, the drug, we needed to talk a little bit about this new phenotype. And a phenotype is just a, a set of observable characteristics in a patient in some simple lab results, sometimes referred to as biomarkers, um, that allow us to identify patients that are a little bit different from other patients. And we had to talk about that a little bit because physicians have traditionally not thought about eosinophilic inflammation as a different subtype. Um, once we covered that, then we launched into a discussion of Nucala, which is a monoclonal antibody directed against interleukin-5, which reduces eosinophils. So for patient care, what this all means is that when you see someone with asthma, in the past we used to have sort of a, a steady progression of drugs we would try them on, and it was pretty much the same progression of drugs no matter what asthmatic you were. Now we're trying to break people down to subgroups and saying, well, in this patient we'll use this drug, but not this drug. And eosinophilic inflammation will be the kind of inflammation that you'll use this product for, and you wouldn't use it for people who don't have evidence for eosinophilic inflammation. It would be a waste of time and resources. The time is that the patients get injected once every four weeks, and you know it takes a while, a number of doses, before you can tell whether the drug works or not. So we try to predict before they even start therapy whether they're likely to benefit, uh, because we don't want to spend six months injecting a, a medication into a patient that ultimately isn't going to work.